Hello. Hi, selfie besties. Hello, hello, hello. It's that time again. Hi, Morgan. First one in class. Alexa, set a 35 minute timer. How are you guys doing today? What is it, Wednesday? I keep feeling like it's Thursday. Hi, Taylor. Hi, Heather. Hi, Julie. Hi, Susan. Hello, Tammy. Hi, are you guys excited? I'm so excited. I'm so excited to teach you all about angles and about learning your face because you guys have been slaying this homework. So I know that this one is going to just be so good. So, so, so good. Um, what did you guys think about the homework assignment? Did you think it was hard? You guys all seem to do really well. So I'm thinking maybe it was too easy. Like maybe I should have made it harder. I don't know. What do you think? Was the homework like right there? Did it challenge you enough or was it just too easy? I would love to know what you think about it because I was watching your homework roll in and thinking, wow, wow, they are doing such a good job. Morgan, are you being sarcastic? You really thought it was hard? Well, I'm glad because it was meant to challenge you. It was meant to make you think about what actually goes into a great selfie versus just snapping a selfie. Now, can you guys see that dry shampoo clump right there? Let's just, let's just brush that out of there. Um, don't get me wrong. I didn't, I don't, I don't know if I've told you this or not, but I, I take selfies in like categories. There are my selfies that like are really, really meant to like catch your eye. And those are usually the ones that I use to boost massive engagement on my posts and my page. There are selfies that I take that are me looking like a hot mess. Um, like completely, um, normal, no makeup, just woke up, my face is swollen, so that everybody can see that I'm just a regular person, um, which sounds funny to even say because clearly I'm regular. And then I take selfies that are like of life. I'm out at a restaurant or I'm out on a date and the lighting sucks, but it's a selfie. It's a life selfie. So those are the three selfies that I take. And I'm pretty sure that everyone has the life selfie down. You guys know how to take a life selfie. That's just a regular take a selfie. Don't really think about it. I'm sure you know how to take the I just woke up selfie. Like, no, it doesn't take a lot of practice. The selfie that, wow, that one is the one that really takes a lot of practice and technical learning and grabbing and all of that. So that's what I'm teaching right now. Mix it in with your life selfies and your regular selfies, mix those in. Um, but if you mix them in, you will see a dramatic increase in your engagement on Facebook. Um, I've used Batiste dry shampoo, Angela, and I didn't like it at all. I feel like the only one that keeps my hair not looking like a grease ball is the Kenra dry shampoo and um, this is five days dirty hair so it's the only one that like I can use and I mean I don't look greasy at all I still look shiny and pretty and my curls are still here so that's the one I use but it does have sporadic white spots if I don't pay attention okay so if the homework was good for you and you were glad to do it, um, I'm excited. If it challenged you but you were still able to do it, I'm excited. That means that we're pushing past your boundaries and we're pushing past what you already know and we're giving you new stuff. That's fantastic to me. That is so exciting. I forgot to send out a reminder tonight. So if you don't see some of your selfie besties in here, do me a favor. Um, down below in this little region right here, you should see a button that says share. Share. 
and it will allow you to only invite people that are in this group. So just thoughtfully invite four or five of the besties that are supposed to be here that you don't see on the live yet because I didn't get to send out the reminder text. Um, selfie bestie bot sent out two messages today, the homework and then the selfie um, ebook, and I didn't want her to send out any more and bombard your like messages too much. So I didn't send out a reminder text. All right, so let's get down to business. Go ahead and share this. Um, I am going to talk to you guys tonight about angles and how to zhuzh up your regular angle because I think that we all tend to get stuck in that this is the only angle that looks good on me. So that's the angle that we tend to use a lot. Um, I actually... <laughs> I need my daughter's phone. I wonder if she will let me borrow it. Selfie bot skipped your house today? Well, when you joined the group, if you clicked through the welcome message and said selfie bestie bot, you would be um, on the selfie bestie bot. Hold on one second. I'm gonna totally. Hey, Lorelei! I need your phone, please. Unlocked and with the mobile bib app. Okay. I want to be able to show you how I work these angles. So in order for you to see them, like I have to actually have a different phone and be able to show it to you. I know the messages are helpful. I don't ever want you to feel like I'm spamming you. And sending out two messages was like, oh, I think I feel like, I think they're going to think I'm spamming them. I just got, I will not hold back anymore and I will send you the reminder text. Do you have that app on there? Yeah. Already okay, thank you. I'm gonna need to use your phone to can can we like turn this off and oh, yeah. this okay, thank you, baby. Um, when it hits 20%, can you do um, low power mode? Yes, so that I make... yes, what do you have going on here? Okay, all right, this is my daughter Lorelai. Hi, she turns 13 in 20 days, 20 days, yeah, okay, Old school week. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys, go ahead. Um, we're gonna be using the Maldiv app, and I know I've been putting that on all of your homework, and I'm sure you've been wondering, like, why, why am I saying that you have to use that app? Here is something that many of you may not know or realize. I did talk about this in the pre-event um, that we hosted one week ago, it is a lot of times we will take a bunch of selfies, but we don't like them and we can't figure out why because we looked good that day. Our makeup was on point. Our outfit looked great, but then we go to take a selfie and we're like, what the heck? I thought I looked cute today. A lot of that reason is because the native camera on your phone will flip your image and like, um, the camera will flip your image and make it like real life when in general we are only used to seeing ourselves in a mirrored image in a reflection. Think about this. I know it's kind of weird to even like, obviously we know the only way we see ourselves is in a mirror or a reflection, but we haven't actually thought about it. When we see ourselves, it's always a reverse image. It's always a mirror image. So if our right eye is smaller to us in the mirror, when our camera switches it around and gives us like the reality version and that smaller eye is on the left, our brains don't recognize the person we're looking at. What? That is 100% true. I figured this out last year and the very first time I presented it to anyone it was like mine's completely blown because that is so true. If we see anything other than a mirrored image of ourselves, we're like, there's something with this photo that I don't like but I don't know why I don't like it. Family photos, the camera, a lot of times if you look at your image you may not like it but everybody else in the photo looks great it's because you are not mirrored image. Now, if you have a 100% perfectly symmetrical face in every single way, which by the way, a lot of us don't, it's just 
not really genetically happening all the time, then we may not notice this. But those of us who don't have symmetrical faces, like this girl right here, um, I 100% every single time would look at my photos and be like, something is wrong. Like it looks like me and it clicked one day because I had a shirt on with words. And in Instagram, the words were backwards because it showed me a mirrored image. But in my camera app, when I took the photo, the words were the right way. And I was like, oh, it flipped it. So I started taking all my photos in Instagram just because I thought I must like their camera more. But it was because whatever I saw in the screen is what I got. I will show you what I mean really quickly. So I'm gonna take a photo. Let me see if I can turn this around and show you. I'm gonna take a photo. Well, that lighting is awful, but. Okay, the lighting was on this side and this is what the Maldiv app. So exactly what I saw is what I got, okay? I know this is an awful example. Um, but then, where does my daughter keep her normal camera? If I take a photo this way, it shows me on the left, but it actually positions me on the right. It flips it around. Does that, okay, so let here's the Moldiv app, and here's that one. Now, I have gotten very used to my photograph, and so a lot of times I'm still okay with the, the first one. But in the very, very beginning, when I was really having to push past insecurities and feeling bad about putting um, selfies up, I really needed to be okay with what the selfie looked like, at least a little bit. And doing that small change using an app that kept it backwards made a huge difference. So Moldiv is my app of choice. It is the one I use for all camera applications. It's this one right here, M-O-L-D-I-V. You can also use Instagram, and Snapchat also has that mirrored feature. Um, but I like Moldiv. There are two things that you have to do when you get the Maldiv app. Number one is you need to click this little rainbow wheel right here and that will bring up filters. I don't use filters, I always just do natural because I edit the photo later. Maldiv is a free app if you don't buy filters. And then this right here, this little star bar that slides across the bottom is a skin softening smoothing thing. I never go above 20 because I don't want to fake my skin. I don't want to fake who I am. I want a little bit of help. But if you go too far with the smoothing, people are going to know. Okay? They're just going to know. So we're not going to go too far on the smoothing. So those are the two things I will tell you about. And you know what? I don't even go to... Let me see here. I don't even go up to 20. I think I keep it like right at 19. And then I have, whoops, see she hasn't bought it. So then I have a photograph that I enjoy. Okay. All right. So let's talk about angles. You learned yesterday that you have to be the studier of your face. You have to watch how the light plays on your face to make sure that you get the most flattering photo. The same is true with your selfie. You have to really pay attention to the way your face looks before you take a photograph. So when I am trying to do a different pose or a new angle, let me move back here so you can see. I am holding my phone now, you guys. My phone is always this close to me. Almost always. It is never up above like this because there's no need to be that way. Even if we're overweight, which by the way I am. I'm 239 pounds right now. If I hold it up here, it's not... First of all, I think we need to understand something about a selfie. A selfie 
Christy, that's why. You have to turn the skin soft way down. Um, a selfie is meant to feel like you're next to that person. No one is ever going to be four feet above my head. I'm five nine. Five, no, I'm not. I'm five six. My husband's five nine. No one is ever going to be four feet above my head. So taking a selfie with the camera that high up and that far away is never going to be realistic. That's not going to show a real connection with you. It's going to show off a lot of the background. And by the way, if you are trying to show off something, that photo is okay to do. But doing it from up here instantly makes your forehead wrinkle because you're looking up, right? It also instantly disconnects because it distorts reality a little bit, okay? So my husband is 5'9", which is about three inches above my eyeballs. So when I take my photo, I'm about three inches, like my camera is right here. It's about three inches above my head, maybe a little bit more. And that's when I realized my husband hit the jackpot because he only always sees me from my very best angle. And that made me really excited because then I was like, oh, he does think I'm beautiful because he's not looking up my nose all the time. And he's not, <laughs> like, that was just a dawning moment. Um, if your husband is shorter than you, it doesn't matter. They still love us. They still want to see us. It doesn't, it doesn't even matter. So what I'm going to show you, I'm going to get up and go get my second ring light because I want to be able to do a little demonstration over here and I need to have the proper lighting. So if you have, um, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go get that. Now, one of the biggest things that you need to know about taking a photograph and a selfie is this. Do not look at your screen when you take the photo. You need to look into your camera, okay? And that will come tomorrow, I'm gonna teach you that way more tomorrow. But don't look here look at whichever one of these dots is your camera. I'll be right, oh, never ever, oh, no. I have. A, I touched a blue, uh, some kind of blue filter and that was not looking good. So I'm gonna go back to normal. How did I even get there? I don't know. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get that light. Okay, so I want you guys to realize this is going to feel awkward and weird at first because I'm going to tell you to bring your hands to your face, to play with your hair, to touch your face. I, Brandy, I didn't send a notification because I felt like I already sent out two for the day and I didn't want to send out more and make anyone upset that I was sending out too many messages. So I didn't send out a reminder. I have been properly scolded for that and am no longer afraid and I will send you out as many notifications as I think you need. This thing is on my ring light because I didn't, this is my old ring light that doesn't have a dimmable switch. If you don't have a dimmable switch, yes, you need this on your ring light. But if you win the one that I'm giving away, it comes with that. Okay, so you're going to see, I'm going to move through different, yes you can. Kathy, you can play with your hair, you can touch the nape of your neck. What we're trying to do is emulate what a model does. If you look in a magazine or you look at a photo ad, models are never just sitting there like this. They're always doing something because we're inviting in a conversation. You and I are sitting here talking and my hands are constantly going, I'm flipping my hair back, all this. I assume if you were talking to me, you would be moving your hands as well. This is part of conversation. 
So if we don't engage our hands, if we don't change the way our faces are, if we stay static the whole time, every single selfie, then people are going to be like, well, she doesn't do anything. Now that's not to say if you post the same exact selfie like three times in a row that people are going to notice because they're really not going to notice because your, your selfie gets sprinkled in with everybody else's posts so they're not seeing them back to back to back they're seeing them mixed in with a bunch of stuff and it's already taken their brain long enough to forget that you posted a photo that looks the same so I would I just want to give you a couple of quick quick little examples of how I would do this okay I think I'm gonna turn this light off okay I'm gonna turn this light on so here's how I usually work oh, you know what I hate about um, being in a closet? The floors are unfinished and I get wood splinters all the time. Okay, so you guys are getting a backstage pass to me and my selfies. Can you guys see okay? Let me know. Let me know if you can see me. Oh, Christine, I didn't send a notification. I'm so sorry. I will not make that mistake tomorrow. Okay. So, again, I am making sure that the skin softening filter is turned off. I have it on normal. Now I'm making sure that this is the right height for me. So I have a pop socket. So does my daughter. This is perfect for taking selfies because it will hold it so that you don't have to manage all of it okay so I would be if I was just doing a normal one turn it this way so maybe you can see um so I this is honest to god what I do I primp and I change like if my hair isn't big enough for what I want I think of myself as a model if I was a model on set, I would have some stylist going around fixing my hair, making sure my lipstick was on. I'm a model for my brand now and so are you. Whatever brand you're in, whatever, you are a model for it. And so you need to take yourself seriously when it comes to certain selfies. Okay, we're getting into that hard work now. So I would hold it here. Now, I know my face very, very well. I know my angles very, very well. I've been studying my face and my angles for the past two years. I know what looks good and what doesn't, but I try to always push myself so that I can have different varieties of angles and work things out. So what I'm gonna show you is going to look super easy, but here's what I want you to pay attention to. I move very slowly while I'm taking pictures and I don't snap the selfie until I like what I see. So for instance, if I take just this regular face on one, then that's just straight on and I like it because I know that that's a good angle for me. Then I want to do something different, maybe something flirtier. Maybe I'm going to make a fun flirty post about something because I, I sell makeup and selfies. So fun and flirty goes together. So. Maybe I would really make my hair messy and get it really big. And then did you see how, did you see, oh, sorry, that light's in the way. Okay, did you see how I was kind of like moving slowly? I was checking which angle I wanted to do and this is the end result. So I like that and I didn't take it until I knew I liked it so I didn't have to delete anything. Um, okay, so let me, if I do it this way, maybe that'll be better for you. Uh, is this better? I mean, my face is totally blown out, but at least you can kind of see what I'm doing. Does that work for you guys? So let's say I want to get really in close because I really, really have something I want to 
tell people like a secret, like a really juicy sale or something, I'm going to get in really close to the camera. Whoa, sorry. And I mean close. This is how close it is. And you'll notice I was just down like this, but I didn't like how my eyes looked, so I tilted my head up just a little bit and to the side. And that gave me, sorry, my daughter has the free app, so ads pop up, that one, okay? If I want to really like add something different to the photo, if I want a little playfulness, Maybe I'll change hands, tug on my hair a little bit, and then I added a little bit of my shirt in. Now I look playful and I look fun. I look approachable. We can do something like uh, if I want maybe my arm in the photo and I want it to look like I'm resting. You can totally sit like that. Okay, I'm not sure I can sit on this chair backwards because of my hip surgery, but I'm gonna just uh, try to do it really, really fast. You can lean on the back of your chair and use this to prop your face up, okay? So the key is, ow, to this light. I'm almost done with this part. Touching your face will feel weird for sure. But it won't look weird. Oh, every two photos there's an ad. Okay, if you're selling lipstick, if you want to touch your lip a little bit, don't hook your face. That will never ever look good. But you can rest your finger right here. And now the attention is drawn to your mouth, okay? If you're showing off jewelry, which I don't have on, let's pretend that this is a necklace. Okay. Oh, that actually looks really cute. Um, you would just gently touch your necklace. And then the attention is drawn to your necklace, okay? Ow. Same thing is all the time. The biggest thing that you need to pay attention to, the biggest thing that you have to pay attention to is what you enjoy. I loved that little thing, that was cute. Um, it's what do you enjoy about looking at your face. So I can sit here and show you my process all day long, and I, I am. I'm telling you that I move and I touch my hair until I like the photo and then I take it. Okay, it's Maldiv. I take the photo when I know I like it and I just fiddle until it's done. I, I do whatever I can. If I want a big smiling photo but I don't want to look like I'm faking it, I totally laugh out loud. <laughs> so silly it feels so silly when I first started doing it um wait oh I just deleted it hold on <laughs> I felt so weird but the thing is is that I would tell my my photography clients to laugh and it would get the most realistic smile and it really does it's a jovial pretty smile it doesn't look fake, it doesn't look forced. Um, it it just doesn't. It looks good. Um, oh, what was I gonna say? Okay, here's something else. A lot of people think that if you have a double chin, I have one, it's a family heredity thing. If you have a double chin, you think you have to be up high. That's not the case. Let me teach you a way that you can hide your double chin without being high above your head. So if I was sitting here like this, directly in front of my face, 
you would see, not, sorry, the double chin. What you want to do is push your chin forward and down. Do not bring it up. If you go up, you see in your nose. Watch what happens when I am sitting like this. You can see my chin. If I go up, my eyes get teeny tiny and you can see up my nose. If I go out slightly, like this, slightly out and down, my eyes got so big and bedroomy and my chin disappeared. Now, if I do that photo again, from the same place, the chin is gone. If I wanted to do a photo from below, which most people would say is horrible, don't ever do it. I don't listen to rules. I, in fact, like to break most rules. I like to do photos from below to show off my eyeshadow because I have hooded eyes. So if I'm looking down, you get a good view of my eyeshadow, but I don't like my double chin. So here's how you do that. You lean forward and you push your body forward like this and your chin is out. Then it elongates your neck. Let me see if I can. It elongates your neck, provides a shadow. You don't look like you're leaning way, way forward. And your eyes, you can see. I love this angle, mostly because everybody says you shouldn't do it. And I love to prove people wrong. I just do. It's in my nature. Okay. So, number one, make sure you are selfieing with um, an app that provides a mirrored image so you can get used to seeing your face that way because you're not recognizing your regular face. Moldiv, Instagram, Snapchat with no filters. Um, there are probably other ones, but those are the ones that I use. My favorite is Moldiv. Number two, study your face. Wait until everyone is gone so you don't feel weird and touch your neck, touch your chin. Don't do this. Like if we're trying to hide our chin, don't do this. But like it's okay to do this. Pull inspiration from magazines. And I wish I had a magazine here to show you because that's that is how I get all of my inspiration for poses. Anything new that I'm trying, it's all from magazines. Um, so that's a huge help. And play around and stare at your face. This is going to be very uncomfortable for those of you that had a hard time picking something out that you loved about your face. I'm not going to lie. It will be hard because you have to study your face and really know that there is an angle and there is something that can be done great because you're beautiful. You're going to have to push past the negativity and you're going to have to force yourself 10 to 15 minutes of studying your face, staring at it. How does it move? When I do this, what happens to this eye? When I do this, what happens to this eye? Um, when I, like, I have one eye smaller than the other. So if I go this way and I look in the camera, this eye, which is the smaller eye, gets smaller uh, more because I'm turning to the side and that pupil opens up. Do you see how that's happening? This one gets squintier because it's going to the side wire as this one looks bigger. But if I go this way, this bigger eye gets squintier while this one appears larger. You have to study your face. You have to push through this and you have to study it. Meredith, I don't think you have a big nose, but we're going to talk about this too because I think a lot of people think they do have bigger noses. Whatever is closer to the camera will appear bigger. So, if you take the photo straight on like this, let me scoot back. Your nose is going to look bigger than if, say, you hold the camera here and just tilt it down a little bit. Tilting it down, not a lot, legitimately just like this much, we're tilting it down just a little, will make your eyebrows appear bigger and your nose get a little smaller, okay? So... All right, so let me just show you in the photos how that looked. 
So here is where the nose appeared a little bigger, okay? And here is where we tilted it and the nose looked a little smaller. Do you see that? Christina, that is exactly right. Can you tell what's happening? Something else that you wanna do, if you are doing a profile, you never want to turn so far that the edge of your nose is not, see like you wanna make sure that if you are turning sideways, Alexa, stop. If you are turning sideways, you can still see this cheek. Otherwise, it will give you like witchy nose complex. Um, it will make your nose look really, really big like Pinocchio. So see how my nose looks pretty proportionate, but if I keep turning, all of a sudden my nose just appears longer because there's no cheek. That's a, that's a thing. It's an actual photography rule they teach you, or I don't know, maybe I taught myself. Don't ever go past to where you're just doing this. Always, always, always have a little bit of cheek showing. Um, to hide wrinkles, Amy, make sure your light is brighter. The brighter the light, the less your wrinkles appear. And and don't don't try to hide them. Amy, I believe that that wrinkles really do tell a story about our life. Now, I used to not like these wrinkles right here. But you know what? They mean I smile a lot. These wrinkles do still drive me crazy, and so I do try to hide that those are there. But I'm not so focused on it. Instead, I'm focused on, oh, my eyes look super blue today. I love this. Also, I just crop the photo like here it down if I don't want to see that. Um, those of you who have sent pictures in where the whole entire background is there, I want you to, like, pay attention and pull the clo the phone in closer to you. Pull it in so that you can be like right in. Right in the frame. I want you to be super close. Something else I see a lot of women do, they're trying not to smile, but they do this. Their, their lips are super tension. So to let go of that, you're gonna stare at the camera and you are going to get your, <laughs> sorry, there's a piece of hair tickling my face. You're gonna keep your mouth closed. You're gonna breathe in your nose and then out and then breathe in slowly from your mouth. So that doesn't mean that you're like this. <sighs> it means that you're just barely letting your lips part so that some air gets in. That will release the tension in your mouth. So I don't know if you saw that. Watch how my mouth reacts. It just barely relaxes and lets air flow through. There's no pursing of the lips. There's no tension. There's no mean face. It's all there. Also, mean eyes, don't do those. Just try to smile. It's like squinching this little muscle right here. So this is like a normal face, and that's a smile. I don't know if you could see it, it was very subtle. Your eyes just kind of come alive. You think of smiling or flirting with someone, but it's your camera. Um, no, you do not have to cut off your, I mean, you, the, you've always heard not to cut off any of your head, that's not true. In fact, as a photographer, I was taught by someone to crop out heads because unless you are showing off a hairstyle specifically, you don't need this part of your head for the photo to be good. Okay? You don't have to. Ugh, this is gonna. Again, that is a rule I like to break. I don't like people to tell me you shouldn't do that. I am not the greatest person with rules. Um, let's just go through my selfies and see which ones I kept my head in the photo, okay? And you tell me if you think they're bad because I don't have my head in there. Okay. Uh, I cropped out my head. Cropped out my head. Cropped out my head. Cropped out my head. I don't think there's a single one where I kept the top of my head in. They get close, for sure. 
there is more and there is less, but there's not any of them where I actually showed off my head a lot. Foreheads are not, they don't have to be in the photo. I would use every single one of those photos. There isn't a single one that I don't like. Um, and that comes from practicing over and over and over, knowing that I can produce a good photo. And once you find, oh, dang, I love that photo. It will click in your mind, oh, I can do a really amazing selfie. I really can, I just have to practice. And this is where my part of the job ends and now it's all on you. If you don't get this part, I promise you it's because you didn't practice enough. Because I have not seen a single person, and I've taught lots of women, thousands of women last year. I have not seen anyone who's actually done the homework and worked on it not be able to do a selfie really, really well. Um, in fact, I've seen huge changes in people's social profiles. I've seen them go up the ranks of their company because of their selfies. I've seen their engagement go through the roof. They've been offered influencer um, affiliate things from other companies. It's, it's awesome. Having a good selfie presence really is key to building any type of brand on social media. Okay, I'm going to go through questions now. If there's any left, Balance out the dark and white space. Okay, glasses. Kathy, glasses are difficult. Unless you have anti-glare, and even if you have anti-glare, they're still difficult. You have to just find a way to tilt your head until the, the light isn't present on your glasses, or you just have to, 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 to get over the fact that it's gonna be on your glasses. Sometimes you can scoot way back and the glare won't be there. Sometimes you can scoot up far enough and the glare will only manifest like in your eyeballs so you don't necessarily notice it. But glasses are one of those things that unfortunately light just doesn't agree with and they bounce off. Um, so I would say maybe balance some with glasses and some without. Uh, that way you have a good mix and you don't feel like you're stuck with the glasses glare and you see that you have other options. Um, okay. Could you please address people who wear glasses? Yes, Kathy, there you go. I just did. Um, what about color, like evergreen filter? Well, I don't know what an evergreen filter is. What do you mean, or some color? Are you talking like putting filters on? For me, I go with whatever I like. I don't put a lot of filters on, but I also sometimes like the filters. So it's up to you and your brand. I will say don't filter all the time and don't filter so much that it distorts your actual face because then instead of falling in love with your face, you're still covering it up and falling in love with something else. There is something called like a, there's some kind of mental um, illness that's going around right now. This sounds so crazy, but it's so real where women are so addicted to filters and Snapchat fil filters that they are taking photos of themselves with the filters to plastic surgeons and asking the plastic surgeons to make them look like that filter. For the love of God, don't do that. Let's fall in love with who we are and have filters as an added bonus, okay? And if you are feeling like you are so addicted to filters and you have to rely on filters, message me and let's have a private conversation about it because I think I could help you transition out of that. The blue light filter distracts you, yeah. Thank you. Okay, all right, okay. So if you guys don't have any more questions for tonight, I'm gonna call it. Watch um, for your homework assignment in the morning. I'm sorry I did not send out a Reminder, after I sent out the um, workbook, the ebook, oh, I forgot to tell you, in case you didn't check your reminders, I did figure out how to get my book out of like a vault that it had been in, and I decided to price it at $10 instead of $50, so you guys are welcome to it. I did send out that, um, I sent out that in a reminder, and I think because I sent that one, I felt bad about sending um, 
another one I didn't want you guys to feel like the selfie bestie bot was like driving you crazy although she's there to make you more connected to me and help you and help me connect to you so yeah um okay let's do an Alexa song Alexa volume up okay so Alexa play champion by Carrie Underwood this is one of my favorite songs I listen to this when I am a little insecure or feeling scared about going live um, Alexa volume up Alexa volume up Alexa volume up did your Alexa come up um, if I let this play too long Facebook will turn it off but listen to the song, listen to the words, get it in your brain. It's amazing. I am invincible, unthinkable, unstoppable. They knock me down, I get up again. <laughs> when I get really, really nervous, when I'm about to start a class like this, when I'm about to do something live on my wall and I'm kind of scared because let's be real, I look like I have it all together but I get really nervous that people are gonna call me out or call me a narcissist or call me fat or call me any, I get negative stuff left and right and sometimes it really gets to me. So I will listen to this on loud, loud, loud and know that I'm a champion. I was given this gift. I'm supposed to make a difference. I'm supposed to reach out to you. I'm supposed to help you grab your life by the balls and run with it. Who else is out there teaching you this? Who else is telling you that you're beautiful? Instagram's not telling you that. Instagram's telling you that you need to be a fit model who wears her underwear all day and eats a mango. You need to know you're important. And this song helps me remember I'm important and it helps me know that you're important. So I love it so much. Um, so you can go turn that on replay, listen to the words until it sinks into your soul. Um, if you didn't purchase the workbook, it should be in your message boxes. Listen, Morgan, um, before this, Alexa, stop. Before this, um, for dinner, I had a five-layer burrito, a Doritos Locos Taco, and half of a Chalupa. So, I shouldn't be eating that, but it was so, so delicious. Okay, um, the book is in your messenger. If it's not, message me. I'll send you the link to it again. I will definitely send you reminders tomorrow about the homework and the live so that nobody misses out. And, you know, I'm right here. I'm just a message away. So, I love you guys. I am so thankful that you let me teach you today, and I really hope that this helped. I would love to know what you took away from it. Uh, you know, love language is words. I'll tell you that every day. Tell me what you thought. Have a great night. Enjoy your music, and uh, when everybody goes to bed, go into your closet or go into your hallway, get your light, get your whiteboard, and take a selfie. And don't stop until you find one that you love. So you can look at it and say, Holy crap. I love that photo. I love that photo. Okay.